from GC 90.7 FM. The people, the places, the events that affect your life. This is Rap Line with Emily Blaze. Rap Line is on location today. We are in downtown St. Andrews, historic St. Andrews, and we're going to visit an art metropolis. It's called Floriopolis. So let's check it out. Ramp Line is on location today. We're in a historic downtown St. Andrews and in a very beautiful space. It's called Floriopolis and um, they're calling it the Arts and Culture Metropolis. We're going to find out what exactly that means and a little bit more about it and how you can get involved and um, show off your own art, make your art for just ten dollars with help and a lot more and I'm sitting here talking to uh, Heather Parker she is an artist she's also the creative director for Floriopolis Heather thanks so much for inviting us out thank you yeah great to have you so what exactly is um, this arts metropolis Floriopolis <laughs> there we go I love it when people have to say the name yeah <laughs> so we're a mixture between Florida and metropolis so Floriopolis we are the center for arts in historic St. Andrews and we feature the art of over 120 local artists just in this one space um, all of our artists are Bay County except for a couple two Walton County and one Gulf County and we're open for the public to come in and just take in all of the arts and all of the creativity that we have to offer. And now when you say um, 100, over 120 artists, um, that's kind of surprising, I think, to a lot of people that there's that many artists here in Bay County. What, what are some of their backgrounds and what are some of the types of art they do? We have everything from art created for the sake of art, which is what we put in our exhibits. So we have that themed area where we put out a challenge to the artists and they create to that theme. And we can get assemblages, acrylic paintings. We've got a local shell artist. We have oil painters, potters, jewelers. I mean, we have uh, somebody that makes Randy bots, which are little um, pretend robots. We, I'm amazed at the creativity that we have in the area and how they interpret our exhibit challenges. And then when you move into the market, we have more cards, gift items, housewares, crocheted washcloths, coffee cups, all of the things that you would normally buy from a store, you could buy from here, but it was made by somebody local. Kind of an individual, unique piece. Absolutely. Okay, and that's the market, so uh, if you're looking for individual, unique pieces that really have a story behind them, you might want to check out the market place here at Floriopolis. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I like about it is that we are interacting with the artists. So the volunteer on duty, they're going to know the story behind the piece. They're going to be able to tell you something about it, so then you can then take that story and think about it when you're having your morning coffee, or even just know that someone made that, someone that lives near you, or shops at your same grocery store made this at their house or in their studio and now it's yours so it definitely keeps it personal keeps it local and one of our goals in St. Andrews is to keep St. Andrews salty and having <laughs> the stories and the connections that's what does it now, Heather, you said you also have a studio area for people who want to create. Yeah. And, um, you know, when we first opened, there was concern. Why aren't you putting a wall up? Mm -hmm. And we, we didn't. We moved into this building. We took all the walls down. So you're in the beautiful exhibit space where we're really showcasing the theme and the artists. You move into the market where it feels a little bit more like a store, and you just walk right into the studio. And sometimes... It, it's a mess. Sometimes there's art making happening back there and uh, people can see it. When we have a class going on, you're watching it. You're watching it happen. Artists are coming in and using the studio and people who don't call themselves artists come in and use the studio. And we have instructors here that help you 
create whatever it is that you want to create. Whatever idea is in your head, we're going to give you the tools to do it and the guidance to be happy with your product. So I'm, you know, thinking about my favorite artist uh, and I want to recreate my version of um, Van Gogh's Sunflowers. Right. I can come in We've and, and, you, that. Can, and <laughs> you can help me? Yes, okay. absolutely. Yep. We'll get out the references. We'll show you what kind of paints you need to use. And it's $10 to use the studio. We provide all the materials. And then for those people who want to paint they want to in increase their skills they bring their own materials so that they can then take homework home and work on it later bring it back for critique or for more studio time to work on it and uh, something you mentioned also was a special rate for teens and adults. Yeah, we realized that some people were hesitating to come pay the $10 if they really only had 20 minutes to spend in the studio. Mm -hmm. So we went with a monthly pass. So it's $70 for teens and adults, and that gets you a monthly pass for the studio. So then you can pop in on a, the 20 minutes you have for lunch or the 10 minutes that you can just come in and check on your painting or get a little quick bit of advice, and you're not using a visit. $70 for the monthly pass. You can come as many times as you want. So Heather, um, you of course are an artist yourself and um, uh, people can look on Facebook, they can go to Painter Parker, is it? Uh, that's not really up to date, but Facebook okay. is really the way to go. Facebook, We've got okay. everything on our Facebook page and um, we have our full schedule is there. If you view our menu, that's our schedule of classes. It's got all of our events, tells you who your volunteer instructor is for the day, and um, what other studio things you can do. Like we have a uh, fiber arts instructor that comes on Wednesdays and Fridays. That's on the menu, tells you what days you can come do okay. those things. So I know that you are an artist as well. Um, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your work and, and when you first picked up um, the love of art. Oh, I think I knew I was going to do art from being a kid. I, yeah. I always knew that that's what I would do. So art and organizing. And um, I think we've had some fun exhibits happening where I was able to two years that now I am starting to do a little bit of art again. We've got some fun exhibits happening where I was able to sit and draw on the wall or work on a painting. Um, and then we make them interactive so the public gets to kind of get involved in the art making, even if it's just for a quick five minutes or even just a pencil stroke. Now, I think on Facebook, I was checking out uh, recently some cherry blossoms that you did. Yes, yep. Sometimes you say yes to commissions that are a little outside your comfort zone, and that was one of them. So Beautiful. I was happy to stretch and say, okay, I did it, I'm proud of it, signed my name to it, and off it went. And so um, what kind of advice do you have for someone who has maybe a love of art and uh, want to try, but they're a little bit hesitant because they feel that, you know, oh, I'm not an artist, I can't do that. Or people say, well, I can't draw a straight mm -hmm. line. And you say, well, drawing is only one tiny little part of creating art. So if you don't get any joy from trying to learn how to use a ruler and make a straight line, let's not even do that. Let's put a big paintbrush in your hand. Let's get out some uh, polymer clay and have you sculpt something. Let's look at the arrangement of beads we have and let's help you make some jewelry or recycled parts and let's create a sculpture or an assembly so there's so many different ways to take your love of art and put it actually in your hands so that you're doing the art making but it's not just visual art there's making music and there's writing and there's song so we try to get a, all of that incorporated into Floriopolis we're definitely visual arts heavy mm -hmm. but we have the guitar out you can come in and just strum a few tunes and then there's definitely appreciation for Every, that everybody isn't going to be the art maker, the producer. So you can love it without having to make it yourself. You can buy somebody else's piece or just come in and participate in the exhibit and the energy that's going on and just like a piece. You don't even have to buy it. Not everything we have is even for sale. Um, as artists, not every artist makes art for the purpose of exchanging it for money. Mm -hmm. right. The market, that's what it's for. But when we have the art in, ex in the exhibit, some of it was made because they wanted to say something. And doing it visually was the best way to speak the message that they wanted to get across. So not everything you see in here, you can't take it all home. Some of it belongs to the artist and it's very strongly a piece of them. And when the exhibit's over, they're going to take it back again. Now, for yourself personally, when you are painting, are you doing it just um, for a love of you want to paint something or do you um, want to 
get a message across about something? Uh, they're intertwined, both of them together. Sometimes I would will start a piece and not really know what the message is, but by the time I'm done with it, I know that I've made it because I wanted to say something. And I sometimes discover that while I'm making it, or sometimes that's the purpose for doing it. And definitely for me, there's a big difference between painting for work and painting because I want to paint or I want to draw. And um, those two don't always mingle with each other. Um, and you brought up the cherry blossom painting. The, the big thing that I had to go through with that one is that artists always say, I never know when to stop. And I say, well, sometimes you stop when you're done. It's not always about completing something it's not always about the painting. Sometimes it's about you. So you either you can stop when you're done, but that came more clear with the cherry blossoms. I stopped when I was tired of caring about those cherry blossoms. <laughs> Once I you know painted the 97th one, I was like, look, these aren't going to be good anymore because I just don't really care about these cherry blossoms. <laughs> We're done, and and it was finished. You know, you go back and look at it a couple of days later, and you're like, yep, that was the right time to stop. Stop when you stop caring. And now, as we're talking about, you know, art with a message, um, do you think that art um, can lead to social change? Uh, most definitely. Uh, a lot of artists are creating from a frustration with how society is going or how some aspect of their life is going. Sometimes that frustration can be the catalyst that makes you want to say something. And the result of that can be social change. Our um, exhibit that we had previously was called The Space Between Words. And we, uh, we ended up doing a project that involved permanent tattoos words from a short story contest that we had that then people have tattooed on their body. Mm -hmm. So even that I feel like was a really small social commentary that all these people who don't know each other are now walking around with little bits of the same story written on them and they're going to interact with each other the rest of their lives and not even know it. They're going to move away, mm -hmm. they might run into each other, so at any given moment you're with your tattoo you're going to be standing next to somebody that also has one. You may meet you might not, but even that connectedness of using small town, a short story contest, some words involving tattoo arts, um, we, we got a point across that everyone is connected. Heather, uh, are there some um, artists either alive or dead that really inspire you? Um, there are. There are a lot of contemporary artists that are actively painting right now that I do go to their Facebook pages and look at what they're creating. I think I've been so busy being the administrator and the cheerleader and the this and the that that I'm now trying to seek out a balance to make sure I'm fulfilled with my art inspirations and my um, production level. Uh, so Paul Clay was an artist that I really admired. And, you know, I have art history books that I can flip through and find any gazillion paintings that I found were inspirational or that the artist's life can be inspiring. Um, I don't have the name on the tip of my tongue of any contemporary artist, but I do encourage all artists to look at what other artists are doing in the rest of the world right now, mm. because you do find a lot of similarities that different energies go around the world. And you might know somebody here in Florida that's creating something that's really similar to someone in another country. And obviously they don't know each other, they haven't met, but the, the creative trends and the energy that's going around, it's all very connected, yeah. And you are listening and watching Rap Line here on GCTV and GC 90.7 FM. We're here on location at Floriopolis, the arts metropolis in historic downtown St. Andrews, uh, just off of Beck Avenue. So if you want to stop by and visit, you can. And um, we're talking with Heather Parker. She's the creative director and artist as well. Um, you know, what message do you want to get across to our listeners and our viewers today about Floriopolis. Come see us. You'll be amazed at the talent that we have in the area or at the ideas that people are representing in their work. Um, we're a very casual place. Everybody is welcome. A lot of people walk in the front door and say, oh my gosh, I've entered an art place. Well, <laughs> It's okay, don't be scared, come in. <laughs> you can draw a bubble on our wall, you can look at the exhibit, hang out in the market, sit down, play the guitar. We always have a free art table, so you can sit down and do a quick 
10 minute free art project. Um, all the supplies are there. We gave you the idea, we're giving you the instructions. So you can't stand there and say, well, I'm not an artist. Well, it's not for artists. It's for the everyday person to sit down and just make something. And we do probably nine times out of 10, people stay much longer than 10 minutes because they have sat down, they put their phones down, whoever's in their party with them, they all sit, they giggle, they laugh. It's something silly and it's a nice break to the seriousness of your day. Um, and then if we're not even open, you can go to the art courtyard outside, look at our fence that we have created by a local artist. We've got a mural in progress and you can sit out and play chess on the courtyard. Uh, so come see us and come, plan to hang out for a little while. There's a lot to see and you can't take it all in in a quick visit. Right. And, and one thing you mentioned when we walked in the doors was um, most galleries, you know, people are encouraged look don't touch and you're opposite of that right there's tons of things in here that are here because we want you to touch them we want you to engage the um exhibit that we have right now is dwellings and there's parts like you can dwell in a structure or you can also dwell in your memories and we have a piece in this exhibit that combines both of them and it's filled with little 1980s troll dolls right so <laughs> we want you to touch with them play with them connect with whatever memory you have to those and then uh, you can always do a bubble on our wall we normally have something that you can contribute to and we always have a takeaway so you can right now we've got um, origami houses we made them we made them for you to take them touch them rifle through them pick your favorite one and and leave with it uh, and then we always have some blocks or other other fun things that artists have made that are definitely meant to be handled and um what is your um i guess proudest um moment as you're working day to day here or hmm. what makes you most proud to look around and see everyone here at ease hmm. um there's a lot of people that are afraid of, of being in an art place or they feel like they wouldn't, shouldn't be in an art gallery. And so to look around and see when the building is full, typically on a Saturday, and there are people here sitting, talking, having conversations, and looking at the art or just being comfortable around it. Uh, we've got a few snapshots of some Saturdays where I looked up and it was all young dads and their sons. And that was a, a memorable moment because typically on a Saturday afternoon, you might think that they would be off somewhere else doing something much more active and stereotypical boy and dad things. But no, they were here and they chose to be here in an art gallery. So that, that was a good moment. And go over your hours that you're open. We're open Tuesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from 12 to 6. And on any given week there will be special events that extend our hours so just check our facebook page for what special things we have and you mentioned also about the draw and wine or oh yeah <laughs> that one <laughs> drink draw and color there you go it's the fourth saturday of every month starts at six be here by eight if we're having a good time we'll extend our hours and we'll stay open late and every saturday that we do it we're having a good time and we stay <laughs> open late but on the off chance that we don't have a big crowd we're going to go home at eight o'clock like normal um, but that's the fourth saturday of every month and then the storytellers come regularly we have musicians that come and do friday and saturday night performances um, different classes that you register in advance for in addition to just our regular come use the studio and do art on the spot and all that should be on facebook is all on our facebook page okay now you mentioned storytellers yeah the bay storytellers a fantastic group of storytellers who tell stories geared towards grown-ups hmm. so in most cases they are kid friendly but it's not kid driven humor it's not stories for children um, you know, toddler time, morning. No, it's adult storytelling. It's going to be things that you as a grown up can relate to and you find funny. And uh, Paul McAuliffe, Pat Neese, Judy Cooley, Wayne Garrett are some of the primaries in that. And they go all around town and do storytelling and they perform at Floriopolis often, often as a benefit for us since we're a nonprofit. People come, they donate to hear the storytellers, and then the storytellers give us the money. And uh, that's wonderful. You mentioned nonprofits. So mm -hmm. um, tell us um, about 
I guess, how people can donate or maybe if you have benefactors, that sort of thing? We have um, our nonprofit community, which donate a certain amount to help make this place. We're a 501c3 nonprofit community arts center, and we rely on donations to offset a commission that we take off sales and a commission off instruction. And we put every ounce of that back into the community doing um, public art projects. So we'll organize again Art World Art Break Day, which involved 36 different businesses and made everybody take an art break for one afternoon. Mm. Um, and those take resources. They and you know they they take the donations that people donate to Floriopolis. So they can donate through PayPal on our website, or they can text me or call me or pop in. And then above the placemaker level, uh, you can be a canopy donator, which makes you definitely a benefactor, um, and you're largely. Uh, credited with helping Floriopolis exist and helping us grow. We, we have a lot of things left we need to do and we want to do to help show how important arts are to a thriving, developing community. Can you mention just a few of those things that you hope to do in the future? To grow the arts part of events that are already happening in St. Andrews. Uh, there are, there's some great flavor here in this historic fishing village and we were missing the art part. So getting people engaged, getting the kids who live within walking distance to come here and do puppet shows and to use the studio and use us as a resource. Um, there's a sock burning coming up so we're definitely going to put the art flavor into that so that we're connecting to a bigger part of the community. Um, World Art Break Day is definitely a big one. We partner with the Gulf Jazz Society to bring the visual arts to their annual jazz festival. So we design coloring pages and we take them all down to the um, Gulf Jazz Festival and bring the coloring books and the, um, and the color pencils and ask people to be inspired by the music and color while they're listening. And then there's a plein air um, aspect of that where we can get the artists to come down to the park and paint live to the music. And now let's look at that painting and see how it might be different than you painting alone in your studio, you know, in a different environment. And the product is going to be affected by the environment. Now you mentioned a sock burning. What I is know, that? Right? So Sounds it's the interesting. opening of boating season. So it's the time of year in the spring when you take off your socks and you don your flip-flops and ceremonially you throw them in a barrel and you burn them. But we're definitely going to capitalize on the art part of entering spring season, boating and getting rid of your socks. There's all kinds of super things we can do with that. Interesting. Real quick, I wanted to talk to you about collecting art. Um, a lot of people are intimidated. They don't know um, what what should I buy? Um, how much should it cost? Uh, you know, uh, what are some tips on that? Well, definitely look that it's an original and not a print. Look for that artist's signature and then some type of record keeping on the back of the piece. So you've got the artist that signs the front, but you want the back to note something. Um, the title of the piece, where it came from, or maybe where it was created, and a little bit more information, not just a date on the front. Um, so you've got that documentation from the artist. And if you're collecting contemporary art, artists make themselves able to be found. So connect with them. And then you'll be able to connect with other buyers that have bought the same pieces, and you can kind of track how the value is going. And if you're looking at an older piece, definitely go to an appra a trusted appraiser and have them give you the history. And what makes the art valuable is the story. If you've ever watched any of the shows where they're valuing antiques and art, it's the story that makes it important. So connect with your artist and get their story because that's going to be valuable later in the life of the piece. Do you have any art that you've collected that has a particularly interesting story? Um, well, I've made sure to buy art from my peers. Um, it's really important for artists and creatives in one community to support each other. So every time I can afford it, I buy a piece. And um, the pieces to me that mean the most and have the best stories are the ones that I was somehow involved in the creative process. Like we inspired each other to do something. Um, there was an art exchange through an um, arts group where you finished a piece and uh, then you had to trade it with another artist and they finished it. 
and they could choose to complement what you already had going on or they could choose to disregard it and take it in a completely new level and then you bought your piece back but now your piece had been touched by an, another artist so now you had both your stories together mm -hmm. so um, that's probably one of my favorites well, Heather, uh, this wraps up our edition of Rap Line right now. And thank you so much for inviting us into oh, this gallery. It's beautiful. You. And I learned so much. And um, thanks for your time today. Thank you. Thanks. And that is a wrap for this edition of Rap Line. Again, thanks to uh, Heather Parker here at Floriopolis and St. Andrews on Beck Avenue. I'm Emily Blaze. And a reminder, hey, if you're thinking of adopting an animal, consider the adoption option. Check out one of the many local animal shelters, or you can check out our Pet of the Week on our Facebook page. Until next time, thanks for listening and watching, and have a great day.